you might be using the forge wrong, but you need not worry. Let me show you how to maximize everything. What is the forge? Well, it's simple. The forge is this magical anvil thing that can enchant both your weapons and your tools. It can also enhance your weapons and combine your rings together to form bigger, better rings. To get to the forge, you just need to progress to the volcano on Ginger Island and reach floor 10. You will need to do this in a single day, but it's not hard if you use coffee, spicy eel, and not explore the entire room. Just focus on reaching the next floor and you will do it really easily. After reaching floor 10, don't forget to use this exit first and click on this button. This is important. If you do this, then you can immediately skip to floor 10 in the future and do not have to progress through the entire volcano each and every time. Before I show you everything you need to know about the forge, the first thing you need to know is that the forge has a currency. Everything you do here will cost you cinder shards, and there are only a few ways to get cinder shards in this game. First, you can find these cinder shard nodes within the volcano. Always mine these whenever you see them. These magma sprites and magma sparkers can also drop cinder shards when you defeat them. If you are after even more cinder shards, wear a burglar ring and defeat all of them. After a couple runs in the volcano, you should have all of the cinder shards you will ever need. However, if you are looking to passively gain some the shards then you can catch some stingrays in the pirate cove, drop them in a fish pond and collect some free the shards every now and then. Okay, let's talk about your tools. Each one of your tools can be enchanted at the forge. It will cost a single prismatic shard as well as 20 cinder shards. The assignment of the enchantment is random, but it will not change if you reset the day. It's a little bit complicated, but the enchantments will change once you have applied any enchantment to any tool. Keep that in mind if you are low on prismatic shards. There are many different types of enchantments. First, we have the efficient enchantment. Every type of tool can have this enchantment and it's really simple. It just causes your tools to use absolutely no energy. It's not a bad one, but they are definitely better enchantments. Next, we have the powerful enchantment. This can be applied to your wood chopping axe as well as your pickaxe. This is better on the pickaxe as it will allow you to destroy rocks in the volcano with a single hit instead of two hits. Otherwise, this enchantment is not that helpful. The shaving enchantment is unique to the wood chopping axe. This will increase the amount of wood that you will gain from chopping down trees. Not bad at all. The swift enchantment is most definitely one of my favorites in this game. This can be placed on every single tool except for the fishing rod and the watering can and it will increase the speed that your tools can operate by 33%. I promise you that once you use the swift enchantment you will never want to go back. Just look at how fast this is. The fishing rod has a couple unique enchantments just for it. First we have the auto hook enchantment. This will simply cause your character to hook in fish immediately without requiring you to click when you hear the sound. Good for lazy players like myself. Then we have the master enchantment. This will increase the fishing skill level by 1. This will allow you to naturally be over the maximum level of 10 and with the use of seafoam pudding you could even go all the way to level 16 fishing. You will have a massive fishing bar if you do this. Next we have the preserving enchantment. This will give you a small chance that your bait or fishing tackle will not be consumed on the next catch. The reaching enchantment is a very interesting one. It will add another layer to your tool's maximum charged range. Instead of holding down to a 3x6, you can hold further for a massive 5x5. Five five. To be honest, I am very conflicted with this one. It's slower, but it's slightly bigger. I don't know if it's any good, but let me know what you think. The watering can has one unique enchantment, the bottomless enchantment. This will make your watering can magical, meaning you will never have to refill it. Very nice. Your hoe has two unique enchantments. First, there is an archaeologist enchantment that can double the chance of finding artifacts when hoeing artifact spots. And the generous enchantment that gives you a 50% chance that double the loot will be dropped when hoeing. This is actually pretty good for clay farming. The scythe and a slingshot cannot be enchanted, which is very sad, but it is what it is. Now, onto weapons. This is where it gets extra interesting. As you know, you can bring a prismatic shard to these three pillars to get a galaxy sword, but you can turn this galaxy sword into an infinity blade at the forge. All you need is three galaxy souls. To get galaxy souls, just do a bunch of key special order requests and then buy them from him, or buy them using radioactive bars on the last day of any season at the island trader. Once you have three of them, use them with any galaxy weapon. It will cost three soul shards and 60 cinder shards. You can do this with a galaxy sword, dagger, and even a hammer. Now that you have an amazing weapon, let's just, you know, make it even better. Weapons can also be enchanted. There are five enchantments that any weapon can have. 
First we have the Artful Enchantment. This will reduce the cooldown of the weapon's special move. This is absolutely amazing on a hammer where you always use a special move, especially if you pair this with the Acrobat Profession. Next we have the Bug Killer Enchantment. This will increase your damage to bugs by a massive amount and it will allow you to defeat those unkillable bugs in the Skull Cavern. I would avoid this one to be honest. The Crusader Enchantment is pretty good. It will increase your damage to both mummies and ghosts by 50%. Additionally, it will allow you to defeat mummies without using a bomb on their corpse. This will save you time as there are always mummies in the Skull Cavern and you will seriously stockpile cloth if you use this enchantment. The Vampiric Enchantment is perfect if you love tanking the enemies head on. Whenever you defeat any enemy in the game, there's a 9% chance that you will regain health equal to 9% of their maximum health. This is surprisingly reliable and I often pick it when I'm doing some very challenging key quests. Now we have the Haymaker enchantment. This is a strange one. This will cause weeds to drop more fiber when you harvest them and it can allow you to harvest grass using your weapon. This is not a combat enchantment. This is for utility. If you are often hitting weeds for fiber, then use this enchantment on a secondary weapon like your old lava katana for example. Now onto weapon enhancements. There are 7 different types of enhancements that you can add to your weapon. You can add up to 3 enhancements per weapon and you can mix and match the different enhancements if you want to. To apply an enhancement to a weapon, simply place your weapon in and place the corresponding gem. The topaz will increase the defensive stat of your weapon by 1 per level. The ruby will increase the base damage of your weapon by 10% per level. The jade will increase the critical damage by 10% per level. The emerald will increase the speed of your weapon by 2 for the first and the third level and 3 for the second level. An aquamarine will increase your critical strike chance by 4.6% per level. And lastly an amethyst will increase the knockback by 1 per level. Each upgrade will cost cinder shards but if you are very low on cinder shards you could use a diamond for now. A diamond will apply 3 random enchantments to your weapon thus saving you gems as well as cinder shards. But you can remove them all by clicking this button over here. You can combine two rings together to get the bonuses from both rings while only taking up a single ring slot. You cannot combine two of the same rings and you cannot combine combined rings. The combination will cost you 20 cinder shards but if you have made a big mistake, you can also undo the combination by clicking this button over here. I don't know why you would ever do this but you can change the look of your weapon if you wanted to. Just place the weapon with the good stats here and the weapon with the look that you like over here. And just like that, your infinity blade now looks like a rusty sword. Sword. Very impressive. This isn't for the forge but you can also change how your boots look using the sewing machine. Put the good looking boots here and the powerful boots here. Always Roman style. You now know everything there is to know about the forge. But do you know which professions is right for you? Check out this video to learn more. Thanks for watching but for now I will see you in the next video.